I'm not going to let you blame it on the offense because you didn't blame the offense when they had those other quarterbacks. You blame the quarterback, but you want to stay in good graces and you won't call Aaron, out, Aaron Rodgers out. He's playing awful. You know it. Everybody in New York knows it, and everybody around the NFL knows it. He's playing terrible. Call it like you see it. Moments later. I'm not telling anybody Aaron's playing well, but it's also not my job to go on national television and talk about a Hall of Fame quarterback when I was a backup quarterback and say that he stinks. Whoa, yes, he's part of the situation. Stephen A. That, but Stephen that's a. Not, you're a Hall of Famer. You could do I, that. You're a Hall of Famer. You could do Stephen that. A. You could do I, that. I need you to give. I need you to give Dio uh, 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 let him see his job description. That is his job. Is to critique. Hall of Fame, non-Hall of Famers, it does not matter. But my what job is to see? put context on why. Bam. Tell it like it is, Shannon Sharp. This is Sports Guy talking that you guys are watching and listening to. I am Dustin Tran, your host, as I am here today to talk about Shannon Sharp accusing Dan Orlovsky of being biased with quarterbacks. Dan Orlovsky refused to call out Aaron Rodgers for having a poor performance against the Vikings on first take yesterday. Shannon Sharp then decided to expose Dan Orlovsky by pointing out that he never refuses to call out other quarterbacks for failing on the New York Jets while holding Aaron Rodgers to a different standard. Before I say anything else, though, I want to present you guys with a topic question. So, here it is. Is Dan Orlovsky too biased with quarterbacks in the modern NFL? Hell yeah. Dan Orlovsky has shown on several occasions that he will do whatever it takes to defend a quarterback for the most part, with the exception of Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott. Dan Orlovsky is constantly making excuses for their shortcomings all the time. This man will do whatever it takes to make sure they have 32 good quarterbacks in the National Football League. I have several clips to show to you guys how Dan Orlovsky is is biased with quarterbacks in the modern NFL, as well as the fact that he constantly makes horrible takes on ESPN. The first clip that I am about to show you guys is when Dan Orlovsky said yesterday that Justin Fields was not the problem on the Steelers. Roll the film. I would say that, that Pittsburgh has a quarter or, or an offensive problem, and it's not the quarterback. The offensive line's not very good. They're not running the football nearly as well as I thought they would. The two things that are hurting in their pass game, there's two or three clips where you want to see Justin's eyes in a little bit more of a better or more consistent place. There's no one getting open that much for this offense. George Pickens is unbelievably talented, but he's not winning that much, and they're certainly not getting them the football enough early on in the football games. This is a football team offensively that their number one issue is when they get into those obvious passing situations. Third and six, third and seven, they cannot beat man coverage. So if you have to ask me really what's the fix for Pittsburgh's offense, it is not the quarterback. Oh shit, here we go again. Although what Dan Orlovsky said was somewhat true and that he was not necessarily wrong, the fact that he is acting like Justin Fields is playing MVP caliber football is absolutely laughable at its finest. Justin Fields has been playing all right for the Pittsburgh Steelers, but it's not exactly like Justin Fields has been a game changer at the quarterback position for the Steelers. For Dan Orlovsky to act like the Steelers are a dysfunctional organization, that is laughable in and of itself because the Pittsburgh Steelers have never had a losing season under the Mike Tomlin era. The second clip that I have to show you guys is about Darren Orlovsky stating that there are nine elite quarterbacks in the NFL. It's a horrible take at the time, and it's an even worse take. Looking back at it, now roll the film. There's a high amount of quarterbacks that teams win with in the NFL, but because of, and it's broken down into two different places, there's nine. The two guys that were tough to leave off, both Jalen Hurts and uh, Jordan Love, Jordan just got to see a little bit more. I, I think he's right on that verge. And then Jalen, I just want to see what he looks like this year coming back in with Kellen Moore as his play caller, third offensive quarter in three years. Um, win because of is broken down into two separate things. One, we win the game even though our defense gave up a ton of points, whether it's 26, 28, 30. Like, we find a way to win more often than not because of you. Or... We're, we're hurt on offense, we're missing receivers, or, you know, our offensive line's beat up, and we, not every, but we find a way to win the game because of you. Those are the two kind of the criteria that they're put into, and I think there's nine of them. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Bro, I'm out, man. I think it's tripping. 
Are you kidding me, Dan Orlovsky? Nine elite quarterbacks? Do you need to go back to elementary school? Do you know how to even count in basic math? How are there nine elite quarterbacks in the NFL right now? In fact, if I made an argument today that there are only three elite quarterbacks in the NFL, there might be a stronger argument for that right now. For somebody like Dan Orlovsky to say that there are nine elite quarterbacks in the NFL right now, that shows me he is trying to protect some of the quarterbacks in the National Football League from getting criticized because there ain't no way Dan Orlovsky he actually believes there are nine elite quarterbacks. I also have another clip to show to you guys about Dan Orlovsky making a fool out of himself. It was about how Bryce Young was a flawless player and how he believed Bryce Young was an elite football player. It was a laughable take at the time and it's an even worse take now. Roll the film. I don't have any concerns about his ability to play at the next level though. Talent wise, there's so many different things that differentiate Bryce Young from really the rest of this draft class. One, there is no pulse on this young man. And then two, no <laughs> play is ever dead. And that's the thing that you look at and go, man, the size is concerned, but my goodness, this is hard to replicate. Are you serious? Elite? Excuse me? Dan Orlowski calling Bryce Young an elite football player? calling him a flawless player. What is Dan Orlovsky even on? I need to be taking some of the drugs Dan Orlovsky is on because there ain't no way he believed Bryce Young was an elite football player at the time. I know he said this before the draft, but I never even thought Bryce Young was anywhere close to being a generational talent at the time. When he was talking about how Bryce Young had no flaws, I'm thinking in my mind, does this dude even understand how the game of football works? I also have one final clip I would love to show you to you guys. It is about Dan Orlovsky raving about Carson Wentz. Obviously, he had an affair with Carson Wentz in terms of his football love for him roll the film I would put Carson Wentz into the MVP conversation I believe in him and Indianapolis that much and then three I'd say this this 2021 Colts team is going to look a heck of a lot like that 2017 Philadelphia Eagles team you're talking about a top five offensive line and run game that's what he had in Philly Philly didn't have a star in 2017 they had like four or five really good pieces around them that's what Indy has, top 10 defense. I believe in Carson Wentz, and I know everyone's talking about the mental aspect and all that, and we're going to get into that, but I think that this is a absolute home run for the Colts. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. I award you no points, and may God have mercy on your soul. This dude called Carson Wentz an MVP candidate on the Colts. What drugs is Dan Orlovsky on? If Dan Orlovsky actually knew what he was talking about, he would realize that Carson Wentz was not going to end up working out on the Indianapolis Colts. But those are all the examples I would love to show to you guys today about Dan Orlovsky making horrible takes about quarterbacks throughout his time at ESPN. All these clips that I showed you guys, those were within the last three to four years. I'm glad guys like Shannon Sharp called out Dan Orlovsky for his bullshit. Anyway, Anyways, though, Dan Orlovsky just shows you what is wrong at ESPN these days in terms of the constant hot takes they have to make out just because they want to garner ratings. So that is why Dan Orlovsky is definitely biased with quarterbacks in the modern NFL as he is showing everything that is wrong with the current state of ESPN. Remember, go ahead, subscribe to Sports Guy Talking, like the video, and please comment down below. If you guys do that, I may shout you guys out in my Instagram story every monday that will be for the adjust nash tran instagram account make sure to follow me on instagram adjust nash tran and that sports guy talking also go follow me on twitter adjust nash tran again go ahead and do those things that i just told you guys to go do hopefully you guys enjoy the content Thou was just produce peace out. I hope you enjoyed that video. Want more sports guy talking, the home of great sports content? Make sure you click that subscribe button to get the latest from sports guy talking. Go ahead and like the video. Comment down below. Check the description box on the video in order to follow my Instagram and Twitter. 
Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from the YouTube channel, Sports Guy Talking.